like to call to order the Dearborn Public Schools Board of Education meeting for February 9th. Can we have a roll call, please? Miriam Bazzi. Present. Joseph Guido. Here. Mary Lane here. Roxanne McDonald. Roxanne will be absent today. Michael Mead. Present. Mary Petchlikoff. Here. President Scholas. Here. Next item. Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. Ms. Stu Susan Stanley, Principal of Salina <coughs> Elementary, will introduce students who will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. the students introduce themselves, we would just like to take a minute if we could to just address the board. We know that last month was school board appreciation and so we are a couple of weeks late. We are a few weeks late, but um, the entire Salina family would like to thank you for all you do to support our family and for all of the students in Dearborn. So on behalf of that, please accept some sabaya and some honey for a treat when you are all done with a thank you note as well. Thank you. We'll give them, we'll give them the honey over there. <laughs> wow. So thank again, you. on behalf of Salina Elementary School, please Just enjoy these treats and a note of thanks from us thank for everything that you do. Thank, thank you. you. Wow. And now I have the pleasure of announcing our Salina leadership team, these third graders, are our helpers at indoor resource the indoor recess they are our tech helpers and we have fun hand to bring good Go stand right over here thank you Hassan al Mauri Anas Ali Ahmed al Qadi Hibad Abad come forward look at there very nice they have a little flower there see that thank you find out soon i have certificates for you so i'm going to go through the names and you tell me which one you are heather thank you look at that here yeah <laughs> thank you they all look Abra? so nice yeah aren't they Sala? great thank you ahmed Thank you. Anas? We have Thank two you. students that were absent today. Yep. Thank you. Thank oh. you very much for being here, students and parents. Thank you so much. I like starting off with kids. Yeah. Next item. Superintendent's update, agenda items. None on agenda, but I have a couple on non-agenda. Well, actually one on agenda, I apologize. Patricia Barton, uh, Howe Parapro, is retiring tonight after 28 years of service. So congratulations to her and good luck. Non-agenda items. You did see that the Bridges Magazine once again named the Dearborn Schools as an academic state champion. So congratulations to all the schools, but particularly congratulations to our early college who was ranked in the top 10 of schools. Uh, certainly it's getting to be scholarship time. So we encourage students who are applying for scholarships to check with their counselors uh, about open scholarships because there's a lot of them out there and most of them require very little uh, in order to apply for the scholarships. Uh, number four, the governor's budget will come out on Wednesday the 11th, so we'll update the board after that. And the legislature continues to talk about their priorities being the evaluation system for employees, third grade reading, and how schools are graded. So we'll keep you updated on that as the legislation deals with those issues. That's all my report. Excellent, next item. Citizen participation, citizens wishing to address the board on agenda and non-agenda items for action who are signed in by 7.10 p.m. by submitting a blue card to the secretary may speak at this time. The board will not, may not be in a position to respond to non-agenda items. Therefore, speakers should not anticipate an immediate response to their comments or questions. For the benefit of all concerned, do not mention the names of students or school district employees. Please keep your comments as brief as possible. Board president reserves the right to limit times, but there are no <laughs> cards. <laughs> Thank you for reading all of it. <laughs> Next item. 
Approval of minutes. Approval of minutes of the following Dearborn Board of Education meetings. Annual organizational meeting, January 20th, 2015, Board Report 1487. Regular P-12 meeting, January 12th, 2015, Board Report 1488. Special P-12 meeting, closed property, January 12th, 2015, Board Report 1489. Special P-12 meeting, open board retreat, January 23rd, 2015, Board Report 1490. Um, make any necessary corrections and move approval of these minutes. So moved. Support. Any discussion? Any objections? Hearing none, I'll attach a unanimous affirmative vote. Next item. Recognition and acknowledgments, commendations. Does the superintendent have any commendations? Otherwise, we do have a high school student here. Fordson High School student Mohammed Abdul Ghani will be reading. Good evening, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Mohammed Abdul Ghani. I'm currently a senior at Fordson High School. Uh, this year I was accepted to the University of Michigan Ann Arbor and Harvard College, and today I'll be reading tonight's commendations. Commendations to four district students who won awards at the second annual Speech Trek Oratorical Contest hosted by the American Association of University Women, Dearborn. Scott Grimal, a ninth grader from Dearborn High School, took first place in the competition, winning $300 in entry in the statewide competition. Christiana Balnick, a senior from Dearborn High School, finished second and won $100. Fatima Taj, a ninth grade student at Fortson High School, finished third and won $75. Fortson High School freshman Reem Al Sharif earned an honorable mention. The students wrote and presented speeches on what can be done about bullying, sexual harassment, and violence in school. They were judged for their ability to express how these serious issues have affected their lives and the lives of those around them. Congratulations to the many outstanding high school students who won awards <coughs> in the Business Professional of America Club Regional Competition held on January 9th at Henry Ford College. Nearly 50 students from across the district are in sixth place or higher, which qualifies them to go to the state competition in Grand Rapids in May. Advisors working with students at each school are Robert Yoder at Dearborn High School, Janice Hathaway at Edsel Ford, Phil McMullen and Angelina Aquino at Michael Berry Career Center, and Betty Richards at Fortson. Commendations to the students and family at Salina who took extra measures to learn what it means to give back to the community during a recent food drive. After collecting and boxing up items, they delivered the boxes to a local food bank. They then assisted with taking the food to families across the Detroit Metro as well as assembling fruit baskets and passing out cooked meals. <coughs> Commendations to Dearborn High School hearing impaired students Maria Barba. Falfa Ganem, Jay Patel, Jamar Rickett, and Fanda Saeed, interpreter Pam Clock, and their teacher, Miss Lori Baker, for taking on a project that will potentially make a difference in the lives of others who are learning, who are hearing impaired across, across the country. During their language arts class, the students studied the stories of five deaf individuals and their experiences which, with local police departments across the country. The students saw how the stories of the individuals they studied related to their own lives. They understood that they could have an adverse experience with the police at some point in their lives, but this might be avoided if law enforcement officials received additional training to ensure clear communication with deaf people. The Dearborn High students learned about a program called Signing for Safety, which teaches law enforcement officers about how to identify if someone is deaf or hard of hearing, the basics of American Sign Language, and the Americans with Disability Act. The students set up a fundraiser at Dearborn High School and raised $375 from staff and students. The money was sent to signing for safety and will be used to create and print booklets to go inside police cars to help officers better communicate with the hearing impaired. We commend the efforts of Dearborn High School students and thank school staff and students for supporting their worthy endeavor. Commend commendations to Dearborn High School football players for excelling in the classroom and on the football field. With a combined team grade point average of 3.86, the team members have once again been recognized as academically being among the top five Division I teams in the state. Commendations to Dearborn High School senior Victoria Williams on being awarded the $1,000 Comcast Leaders and Achievers Scholarship for 2015-2016. 
Victoria was nominated by the Dearborn High School Counseling Department because of her com commitment to helping others. She has been active in the Anti-Bullying Club, Link Crew, Peer Mediation, Summer Stand, Cheer, and a racial justice organization outside school called New Detroit. Her congratu congratulations to Dearborn High School senior Zena Condon on winning two scholarships for her essay, Why Veterans Are Important to Our Nation's History and Future. She won f a f $1,500 first prize scholarship from the Veterans of Foreign Wars Local District and then went on to win a $4,000 second prize scholarship on January 24th at the VFW State Awards in Lansing. Commendations to the student members of the Henry Ford Elementary Ecology Club for using their creativity for a great cause. They led second and third grade students in making ornaments, which they then sold, raising $700 for the Waynes County Homeless Shelter. The club's advisor, science teacher, Ms. M McCormick, coordinated the project with assistance from second grade teachers, Ms. Herod, Ms. Balnick, Ms. Kindred, and Ms. Sharif, and third grade teacher, Ms. Venus. Physi edu physical education teacher, Ms. Suarez, and second grade teacher, Ms. Spencer, donated materials. Commendations to the Henry Ford community, Elementary community of parents, teachers, and students who collected 713 food items in a four-day period last month. The food was don donated to local food banks. Students taking a new direction stand at William Ford Elementary held a Pennies for pu Puppies fundraiser for the Friends of the Dearborn Animal Shelter. For two weeks, students collected loose change, raising $1,126.86. Ms. Lacau's fifth grade class donated over $100, the highest amount in the school. The much appreciated donation will be put to good use, feeding, providing shelter and medical care, and working to provide permanent homes for hundreds of animals at the Dearborn Animal Shelter. Commendations to the PTA and staff at Oakland Elementary for jumping into action immediately and making outstanding efforts to provide assistance when they learn that families in the community are in need. This fall, St. Clement Church contacted Oakland Elementary to request help in restocking the food pantry they run to help feed the hungry. The church pantry lost all of its supplies during the August 2014 flight. In response, the students and staff held a food drive in which they collected 1,633 cans of food. This was enough food to restock the shelves at St. Clement and donate food to a program called Feed Detroit run by Hype Athletic Community in Dearborn Heights. Oakland families also collected hats and mittens and put them on the school's giving tree to be used by Oakland students who need warm clothing. A special thank you to Oakland parents Amjad Muyuddin, Mahira Jadalla, Rose Harb, and Nuhad Sayyid and the Oakland parent slash student liaison Nadina Dekrub for their above and beyond efforts. After everyone had left school for winter break, this group headed out to local stores to purchase $1,700 worth of clothing, clothing and footwear for the children of three families desperately in need. The money was donated by parents and staff members. In another instance, just last week, the school learned that a family with three students at Oakman was in desperate need of furniture. The PTA and staff immediately put out word to parent, school parents and staff asking for donations of furniture. Ms. Ridlick, an Oakman first grade teacher, donated a couch and delivered it to the family with the help of her husband. Another team of parents went shopping to purchase additional furniture for the family. They received wonderful surprise when the owner of Detroit Furniture Unworn did not charge the volunteers for the furniture they were going to purchase. Mm -hmm. A special thank you to Detroit Furniture for donating the furniture to the family in need. The kindness of Oakland parents, school staff, and the owner of Detroit Furniture are shining examples of the care and compassion found across our school district, making Dearborn a truly special place to call home. Wow. This guy had to read a whole book, practically. <laughs> Outstanding job. Great job. Can we ask a question? Uh, I don't know whether you've picked Harvard or U of M. I kind of have a favorite myself. Yeah. But uh, do you know what you're going to be studying? Um, I'm either planning on pursuing uh, medicine or engineering. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably visit, like, I'm not, I haven't made my decision yet, and I'll probably go, I'm probably going to make it after I visit the schools in, like, sometime in April. Why don't you do both? <laughs> Very impressive. Thank you. Yeah. Thank See you so. at graduation, if not before. Congratulations <laughs> to your parents, too. Yeah. Uh, they did a great job, and you've done a great job. Thank you. Follow that, Mary. No, yeah. I'm not no, going I've to. That's going to be Brian Liston. <laughs> <laughs> Acknowledgement of donations. I do have four donations to acknowledge a donation. 
of an alternator starter test bench valued at 1800 has been offered to Edsel Ford High School by Mr. Jim Clark from two guys and a garage to be used in the auto shop. A donation of $200 has been offered to the Effective Education Group by the Dearborn Area Interfaith Network to be used towards field trips. And a donation of $3,000 has been offered to the Effective Education Group by Islamic Center of America, also to be used for the same field trips. A donation of a drivetrain for a Ford vehicle has been offered to Edsel Ford High School by Mr. Jim Rizcala from Metro Auto Leasing Corp to be used in the auto and welding classes. And we certainly thank all those for those donations. No other. Okay, next item. Special reports, Magnet School, MSA, MASA Winner's Circle, Mr. Brian Whiston, Dr. Gail Shankman, Dr. Winifred Green. Well, we had hoped Gail would be back. Oh, Winifred's here, all right. Here's, uh, I didn't see Winifred there. I was <laughs> thought, <laughs> I didn't see Gail, so. I have with me um, Superintendent Whiston, President Scholes, and trustees. I have our new counselor at the Magnet High School with me this evening, Mr. Brian Whiston. Um, wait, wait. Brian, oh, what? Oh, <laughs> I, I can't me. do two jobs. Excuse me, Brian. We, we have about four Brians on our campus now all of a sudden. I'm sorry. Brian Kimian is with us as well. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we attended um, an award ceremony uh, for the Michigan Association of School Administrators. And Magnet was um, nominated for this uh, Winter Circle Award. Um, and if I can, I'd like to read just a brief description that was in the program book about the school itself. Dearborn Magnet High School. Students who have experienced difficulties at their home high school may apply to enroll at the Magnet, Dearborn Public Schools Alternative High School. This school offers a personalized learning environment using the educational development plan to focus students on post-secondary goals and high school graduation. A counselor and three full-time teachers work with the students to help ensure success. Parent involvement is required and each student also has an adult mentor. Students are required to be involved in community service projects. They participate in a blended learning program using project-based learning, Edgenuity and Carnegie Math and are expected to earn college credit through dual enrollment. The school's five-year 2012 graduation rate was 80 percent, outstanding for an alternative high school where students enter already significantly behind in credit. Um, so we are very proud. We had a celebration amongst our staff once we returned. Um, and. Um, you know, we're getting off to a good start for an exciting year. We have how many students this year? Our enrollment is up? It's up to 33? 33, 33, which is about three or four more than we've historically had over the last few years. I certainly would like to add my congratulations to Dr. Shankman and to Winifred and her team. When uh, Gail became the uh, associate soup, she was looking at the program that was there before, and the program there before had less than a 20% you know, graduation rate. And Dr. Shankman came up with a new plan working with Winifred and her team to replace that old school that wasn't being effective to a school that's now winning awards. And if you look at alternative education programs, the graduation rates are nowhere near 80%. So our team is doing an outstanding job. So certainly congratulations to Gail, Winifred, Counselor, and all of our teachers at the program because it truly is an award-winning program. And, and that's important and good but the difference in lives it's making to those 33 students or 30 students is what's really remarkable. Because you had some, a group of students who weren't finding success in the larger high schools, and uh, this really changed their lives. And if, I know board members have been able to go to the graduation ceremony and hear some of the speeches from the students and the things that they've experienced in their lives and how this has helped them get on the, the right road. So certainly congratulations to all, to the board, and Dr. Shankman and Winifred and her team for, for this program. It really is a remarkable turnaround. We really appreciate the, the you support know, from the board. It's really an understatement to say that it's a success because alternative education is one of the most difficult um, because trying to find a balance between being accommodating and uh, meeting the requirements is, is so difficult and some of these students' lives are so challenged that um, it's really, 
heartwarming that these students are able to go on and succeed and it really is life-changing um, and it took a lot of courage to put together this program because it was out of the box and not <laughs> what the typical program is and sometimes that's the most difficult thing because no one likes their cheese moved and mm -hmm. so to to be able to make that stand and and put together a program like this is is great and we're really lucky to have dr shankman and you and and your staff to help these students we, we appreciate the support our students like being at Magna, and that's 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 really refreshing too for the students and their parents sometimes they have not had success at school at all and it is refreshing to see them start to build one success on top of the other so we appreciate the support of Dearborn Public Schools as well. Trustee Lane. Oh I was just going to say and I think uh, Trustee Petrikoff is going to say the same thing I've been to some of the graduations I know Trustee McDonald has also uh, it uh, just about brought me to tears to have some of the grandparents there say that they were convinced that your program saved their uh, grandchildren's lives uh, by making them productive citizens. So I know we're all really proud of what you do there. Uh, I would just like to say also that I just recently had a conversation with the former trustee schoolmaster and we were just talking about how this is we're, we're really proud that Dearborn has done this. The state is always saying that they want uh, innovative programs, um, and I wish they would, uh, when a district does create something different, I wish they would look at it and loosen up some of the strings, the requirements, and then also understand that these programs are very expensive to run. And uh, we need extra support for programs where we help somebody who's fallen down. Getting somebody back up uh, requires more effort than taking somebody by the hand. So I would just like to personally thank you and say that uh, I'm very proud of your program. Thank you. Trustee Petlishkov? Yeah, I, I was going to say exactly what Trustee uh, Lane brought up. I was just at the most recent um, graduation, and I guess it was the first one that was mid-year. Yeah. Um, they only had three students at this particular graduation, but all the other students were also present in the audience and the families of uh, these three students. And um, I would tell you, it was tear-jerking. Uh, we, we had, the. Uh, I, I would say every family member probably had a tear in their eye and um, the students themselves you could just feel the uh, pride of accomplishment and that you suspect that most of the family members had feared for their students um, future and now knew that their students were going to be able to accomplish and succeed um, their goals in life and go on to a, a brighter and better tomorrow that they hadn't anticipated because we gave them another opportunity that they didn't see um, was a possibility. So uh, I, I really appreciate I was on the board when we first started talking about changing this program because we knew we were um, not succeeding and it's very encouraging to come back to return <laughs> to such a success in so short a time. So I really thank you all for that. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, you very much. Next item. Five-year Collegiate Academy update, Mr. Brian Whiston, Dr. Gail Shankman. And she has arrived, thank goodness. <laughs> Although I could have done the update. Okay. You, but, missed, uh, you missed the panic <laughs> yeah. when he thought you and Winifred were here. <laughs> The, uh, the certainly the five-year program uh, is ex very exciting here in Dearborn. It's one of the few, <coughs> we're one of the few districts in the state that mm -hmm. offer an opportunity for students to go to college for free and graduate in five years with a two-year degree and their high school diploma. And this is an important time for Dr. Shankman to give us an update because we do have informational meetings coming up. Students will be taking the test in April. And so this is the time for parents and students really to gain an understanding of this important program. And uh, Dr. Shankman helped uh, me apply to the state and get this uh, on behalf of the district. So I wanted her to give you an update. Well, I, that's where I was this evening, was at Dearborn High, where we had over 100 people at our, um, our meeting. So I really think that um, we're going to have more students this time, I suspect. Um, so um, Dearborn Public Schools has been offering the Collegiate Academy now for um, two years, and this will be our third class that's coming in. The Collegiate Academy allows our students to stay in their home high schools 
and at the conclusion of grade 13, graduate with both an associate's degree and a high school diploma. If you'll recall, it was part of the vision of our superintendent and the board who hired him. In his interviews, he mentioned wanting to bring uh, a free college education to the folks in Dearborn, and that came to fruition. So we're very proud of that. So again, uh, students stay at their home high schools. Students may choose any college major that Henry Ford uh, College offers for two years. Um, students may participate in all of their high school activities. They don't have to make a choice, they can do it all. They can be in college, they can do sports, they can do key club, they can be involved in student government. All of that is possible and students will be welcomed at all Michigan universities, including the University of Michigan Ann Arbor and Michigan State. Now they have decided to join in the uh, accepting us category and that's awesome. So our first class of Collegiate Academy students who are currently in the 12th grade will not actually earn their high school diplomas this June along. Uh, they'll have to wait till grade 13 when they'll get both their associate's degree and their um, diploma. However, they will participate in their graduation ceremonies and they'll have honors courts um, should they earn those and I suspect most of them will. Some of them are in the honors college at, the, at Henry Ford College. Um, they'll be celebrating with their peers at uh, senior party and the senior barbecue, at the uh, superintendent's honors night, all of that will be a part of their experience. They'll be in the yearbook with their, with their fellow um, 12th graders. Um, and they'll be moving on and doing two more graduation ceremonies at the conclusion of next year. So we're very excited about all of that. Our enrollment now in 11th grade is a total of 70 students. In 12th grade, we have 49 students. Um, informational meetings for the next class are um, tonight at Dearborn High and then tomorrow night at Essel Ford High School. To qualify for the early college, or, pardon me, to qualify for the Collegiate Academy, shame on me, uh, students need to have com college ready scores on the plan test and as Superintendent Whiston was saying, that will be given in all of our high schools on March the 4th. Students um, can look back at their Explore scores and they can give them a pretty good idea. They took them last year of how they'll score on the plan test, but we want all of our students to prepare uh, for that test by getting a good night's sleep and coming prepared to do their best work on March the 4th. For our students who qualify for the Collegiate Academy and earn what amounts to a full scholarship to Henry Ford College, we will have a scholarship awards night and that will be on April the 29th at the Performing Arts Center, kind of neutral territory in our district. And uh, where our superintendent and the college president will uh, be, uh, be there honoring our students and awarding them their, uh, their scholarships. Very exciting. Certainly, Dr. Stan Jensen, the president of Henry Ford College is in the audience, as he is at all of our board meetings or most of them. And he is our partner of the, at the college on this exciting program that does offer this free college to the participants. Certainly we pay for it, so it's not free in the sense of that, but it doesn't cost the parents anything. And so what did it, tell me about the meeting tonight. You said 100 people? We had about 100 <coughs> people in the audience at Dearborn High coming to hear about the program. A lot of interest. Um, we tend to have a lot of things named Henry Ford in Dearborn. Right, Dr. Jensen? <laughs> So um, we needed to clarify exactly what we were talking about. More people were familiar with our program and the Collegiate Academy than in the past because it's becoming more and more uh, popular and more and more known. And I think that when we have our graduating class this year, that'll, that'll be a real kicker too, uh, when they walk with their, with their peers. Um, so lots of interest, um, uh, a lot of parents who were very supportive, different questions than we've gotten in the past. So there's more knowledge base that's out there. Um, not a lot of questioning about, about four years versus two years. A lot of our parents and students get the idea that this is two years for free and then I can pay for it going to U of M Ann Arbor. Uh, so, so how do people get more information? Certainly come to that meeting at Essel Ford tomorrow night at 5.30 if you're able to do that. And that includes people from Fordson and Dearborn High are welcomed at Essel Ford tomorrow evening. Um, you can contact me or you can look at the district website as well. There's information there and encourage all of your students to do very well, 10th grade parents, on March the 4th. Justine uh, Mead? What, what programs do the students typically pursue? That's a great question. Most of our students are planning on going on to university, so getting um, an Associate of Science in, or an Associate of Arts degree okay. um, are generally the, the routes that they take, but certainly we have a few that are interested in criminal justice and various other things. Okay. Trustee Petlish-Croft? 
I think I asked this question before when we were developing this program, but my memory's fuzzy. Just on the off chance that we have a student, and now we're approaching that where they're, they're technically a senior mm -hmm. this year, and something were to happen, happen and they would have to um, move out of the state for some reason or another. While technically we ha haven't, a, at this point you're saying they don't actually get their diploma, would we be able to award them? Uh, would they be at that point where they could be awarded a diploma if something happened that they couldn't complete that 13th year? After 11th grade, students can leave. So up to the beginning of 12th grade, students can, parents can choose to, to leave the program and return to their home high school. And they'll have three college classes. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. But once they're in 12th grade, it gets difficult because we can't award the high school diploma till the conclusion of 13th grade or we wouldn't receive our funding. Okay. So it would be problematic for a student who chose but, to leave in 12th grade. But someone could take a summer course or whatever it was to get caught up. They would need to do that. That Take isn't something courses. we can allow to happen. For us to keep this program, we can't allow students to graduate right. before so the end of 13th. So they need to understand 13. that they really have to stay, remain committed through that 13th right. year. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Um, but as I said to the folks tonight, um, if a student is going to be receiving a, an athletic scholarship, usually you have the coaching staff visiting the high school. And by the end of 11th grade, you have a pretty good notion of whether that's going to happen or not. And they still get to participate in all of the Prom, senior homecoming, activities. Everything. I think that yeah. was the biggest concern that people thought that they couldn't celebrate with their friends. Right, absolutely. And, I, and, and even though we've said that on numerous occasions, yeah. this year when they do it, I really think that will hit home even yeah. more so. With the money they save on tuition, maybe they could have two graduation That's parties. That's what I told them. <laughs> exactly what Mr. Whiston said at right. several meetings. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for rushing back. Give the report. Thank you. Already on action yeah. items. Moving right along. Are there any action items on this agenda which board members or the superintendent wish to discuss and vote on separately? If there are, we will exclude these from the motion below. 15 requires a roll call. Yes. President, if I can just correct on orders and purchasing number five, the number in your paper says 39,000. Can't tell if it says 160. 160. But, but it's lower than that. The actual number is 37,826. So it's lower than the number there. The actual number should be 37,826. That's the only change or correction I have. Okay. Anything else? Move the motion. Okay, so move that action items numbered 1 through 17 be approved as recommended in this agenda with the exception of number 15. Support. Motion. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Support. Okay. Any discussion? Any objection? Please attach a unanimous affirmative vote. And mm -hmm. do you want to read the summary first? Sure. Number one, summary of action items. Number one, approval of warrants, which are items for payment by the district and have been reviewed by the administration. Number two, approval of financial institution designations and practices. Of Number three, approval of purchase of VMware Sphere 5 virtual software. Number four, approval of standardized custodial paper products. Number five, approval of 13 Promethean boards for Haig Elementary School. Number six, approval of elementary social studies mentor texts. Number seven, approval of additions at Woodworth and Bryant. Number eight, approval of change orders. Numbers nine through 12, approval of non-instructional and instructional personnel items for P12. Number 13, approval of financial statement. Number 14, approval coordinator, secondary literacy consultant, number 16, approval of January graduates, number 17, approval of donations. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joe didn't think I did something, but I did. I, I, I completely missed it. He, he blacked out. Oh. I was thinking about something else. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for he was so, me he was mesmerizing. It's nice he to know put that you in everybody a else is in tune here. <laughs> I'm or, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm totally out of tune. He thought that uh, he didn't think he read the donations. I didn't even. 
Okay. Okay, return to number 15, please. Uh, calling for executive session number 15. Move that an executive session be held Monday, March 9th, 2015, immediately following the board meeting at the Administrative Service Center in the Superintendent's Conference Room. Okay. The purpose of the closed session is to discuss matters related to property per Section 8D of the Michigan Open Meetings Act. So move. Support. Just so that everybody here is aware and anybody interested in the audience, this has to do with um, us reviewing potential bids for the Howe property. We are putting a um, proposal out there with our requirements and accepting sealed bids that would be open that night and then we would discuss them afterwards. So anyone who is interested may contact the superintendent's office and they will fill you in on the details of uh, the requirements and what needs to be done. So, can we have a roll call, please? Bessie. Here. No. Yes, yes. no. <laughs> yes or no? Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry. You're is fired, it, Is too. it contagious <laughs> on this side? <laughs> What's going on over here? here? Right. I could be next. <laughs> Guido? Here. <laughs> no. Yes, yes. yes, no, yes. Lane, yes. Uh, McDonald absent Mead? Yes. Petchlikoff? Yes. Scholas? Yes. <laughs> you guys all awake over there? <laughs> Next oh. item, please. Okay. Discussion item 30 minute time limit, number A. Uh, letter A. First review budget 2014 <laughs> to 2015. To <laughs> Board report 14100. And he's already up here, Mr. Brian Whist and Mr. Sam Newell-Barnett. Okay, we said no more than 30 minutes. Oh, that doesn't mean less. you need to take 30 this minutes. This is fantastic because they it's a one They might fall asleep pager. on you. <laughs> All right, so before he begins real quick, so as you know by law, we have to have an adopted budget <coughs> by June 30th, and we don't always have all the information, so we do go through revised budgets and that's what Sam is here to share with you tonight. That's right. Um, this first, um, first of all, good evening, uh, obviously everyone. Uh, just wanted to present again as um, Superintendent Whiston has uh, just mentioned, uh, a revised budget for 1415. Again, I actually create the initial budget uh, for the current, uh, uh, current year in June. And so this is my first update to the current <coughs> school year budget. Um, what I'm doing right here is if you, if you look at the screen or look at uh, the, the paperwork in front of you, it's just again a one page document really just showing first of all the enrollments um, as well as showing columns for last year's actuals 1314. Uh, our 1415 original budget that I again that I created in the summer as well as the amended budget that I want to present today and then a column that shows the variance between the amended budget and last year's actuals. And then finally, the key factors uh, for those specific variances in each of the rows or categories, if you will. And so if I can um, start here with the enrollment. Again, uh, last year's actuals, a little uh, right around 19,450 pupils. Uh, we had 19,585 uh, budgeted, actually, uh, students budgeted this year. And um, right now, as it stands for the amended budget, we're looking at slightly over 19,600, so 19,620. So 170 budget increase uh, for the pupils for this year. Um, then if you go down actually one level, we'll look at the revenue. Um, and really the big, the big hitter here is our, obviously our state revenue. Over 90% of our revenue comes from state funding, obviously. And we have year over year, so budget, this year amended versus last year, we have a little over $8 million. And what's that due to? Well, obviously this year for 1415, we had an increase of $50 per pupil, but, and obviously we had a higher enrollment, but that's not the entire answer. Really a large, the largest portion of our funding increase is due to what's really called uh, MIPSERS pass-through. Basically what it is is a retirement that we're receiving as revenue but then it's going right out the door as an expenditure so it's it's simply a pass-through. And the largest portion of that MIPSERS um, is actually based upon our wages, our salaries for the district and its proportion to the state wages uh, for all public, public schools K-12. through and so what happened is year over year, since many districts, except for ours, are losing students and hence 
actually getting rid of programs such as transportation, outsourcing, outsourcing custodial. They have a smaller portion of their <coughs> salary as a percentage of total. We, on the other hand, obviously are pro-union. We like to really retain, obviously, our employees rather than outsource. So our percentage to total payroll statewide actually increased considerably which means our revenue for that MIPSERS offset increased considerably by over $4 million year over year, which again is a large portion of that $8 million favorability that I'm mentioning. So really good thing that's happening there, but again, it's a pass through, taking it in and then actually paying it out. If we go down to the expenditure side of the equation, we have several different categories. And, and really, again, uh, just to reiterate, in terms of our budget on a yearly basis, approximately 80 87% specifically of our budget is salaries and benefits and taxes. So uh, I really wanted to be very specific with you in terms of the main increases that we have year over year from last year's actuals to this year's budget. Um, some of the primary key factors are as we normally have every year, step increases for those that are um, able to receive step increases every year. Um, that's baked into the first few lines of the variance, as well as a 1% increase in cost for our retirement from last year that we're on the hook for as a district. Um, and just to reiterate, that represents that 1%, right around a million dollars of increased cost for us, a little bit over, frankly. Um, in addition to that, we had um, many great new teachers come into the district because of our excellent growing population here of students, and that represented 43 additional FTE approximately from last year. And so that increased cost is represented in within these figures as well, as you can see. Um, furthermore, there was approximately a 2.9% increase to health care costs for the district. We obviously, as a district, wanted to assist all of our employees and Due to PA 152 uh, at the state level, um, we we're allowed to contribute a little bit towards obviously the state maximums that we can as an employer towards healthcare to help offset those additional costs for our employees. So again, all of those costs are baked in here. If we continue down the line, you'll see that there are specific other increases such as increases to, for legal expenses uh, that we incur as a district. Uh, we have unit budgets that we've increased uh, year over year. Again, I want to thank all of the student, or all, I should say all the principals at each of the schools for helping me every year reduce costs. And to say thank you, that favorability that they save me at the end of each year, I give back to them the next year. And so I wanted to show that increase in unit budgets year over year, and that's reflected in that one line item, as you can see. 444,439 is a large portion of that as a unit budget increase. Uh, furthermore, uh, if you walk down, there's an $811,000 um, budget increase uh, for support services. And really what that represents is uh, increases in workers' compensation set-asides. Uh, PESG are sub costs, um, just a slight increase there. Um, we actually ha also had lower indirect cost rates, so we get offsets uh, based upon some of our programs such as IDEA and funded projects, that indirect cost rate went down, which means our expenses went slightly up. So that's what's within that number. Uh, please keep in mind that even though these are um, grouped into very high level buckets, that there's approximately 7,000 different accounts <laughs> within our system. So um, there's a lot going into these numbers rather than just the key factors that I'm mentioning. Again, there's over 7,000 accounts specifically. Um, so I'm just giving you a kind of a really high level overview of what this is. So in the end, uh, we're looking at, if I go down to the very bottom here, um, a net increase in our fund balance that I project for the end of this year, 1415, of approximately $600,000. And that $600,000 also represents um, an expected merit pay uh, of $900,000 for the year. So what I mean by that specifically is we're offering to those that are eligible a merit increase of up to $400 uh, per employee. And um, we, we assumed that this would be a cost to the district of approximately $900,000. That cost is actually already baked into the above categories for salaries. So 
And again, once you increase the salaries, you obviously increase uh, the retirement as well. So that's all factored in. So that $600,000 already takes into account that prospective increase in merit pay for this fiscal year. So again, our estimate for the fund balance goes from the current 9.9 .9 million to $10.5 million for 1415. For uh, the board asks any questions, I just want to uh, add one thing. When, when he <coughs> says we got an increase of $50 per pupil to the new board members, this is that interesting math that's out there. Because last year we got a $52 increase that went away and they replaced that with a $50 increase. So in my math, that's actually a $2 decrease, but it just depends on how you want to look at a math You equation. must not be taking everyday math. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> All I know is they gave me 52 or last year, math, and they're I only giving say. me 50 this year, so that's a $2 decrease in my book. Well, but yeah. what well and I'll get on a political rant, but this yeah. is how politicians can say, I increased education spending, and what they really meant was <coughs> I did nothing because I increased their revenue and I increased their expenses Absolutely. all with the same fell swoop. And that's a lot of that in the retirement, yes. Absolutely. So it's only telling half the story, but I won't go off on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> and we did meet with the Finance Committee uh, prior to this meeting. And for the new board members um, who aren't on the Finance Committee, you know, a lot of our finances are very confusing when you first look at some of these reports as you get used to them don't don't hesitate to ask Sam for a personal meeting Absolutely. if you want to understand or learn more about the different categories or where money comes from or why it's going out I'm sure that Sam would be more than happy to sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and um, go over any of this absolutely Thank you, President Shells. That is actually, I'm available anytime uh, you would like to speak or if you want to email me, call me at your convenience. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm here, obviously. So I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Okay, so Thanks. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of fun looking at all 5,000 lines of that <laughs> spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I tried to reduce it as much as possible, obviously. Yeah. So yeah, we thank you. That was that. a huge document. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you so much. Next item. Acknowledgement of correspondence. I've never received any of anyone else. Some at the table um, here. Yeah, we did get uh, from Julie Plawecki. Yes. sent a um, nice letter letting us know that she's there if there's any educational issues or things that we want to discuss with her. So, Anyone else? Next item. Board of Education Business, Board of Education Committee, and Organization Reports. Well, we did have a Finance Committee meeting, but mm -hmm. Sam kind of summarized it for me, so <laughs> I don't think we need to summarize again. Anyone else? Next item. Board Member Commentary. Trustee Lane. I'd just like to say congratulations to the list of uh, January graduates that we have. Um, it's really nice that we're moving into the time of year when the weather is going to start getting better and we'll start celebrating graduations, but it's particularly nice to start off the year with graduations and to see a list of names of students who uh, have gone back and, and uh, graduated uh, or continued on and graduated. It's a, it's a big accomplishment. I'm really glad to see it. Um, so it's great. Um, something else I was going to say along that line on the graduations uh, it's the start to the graduation season but um, oh the other thing I was going to say is I'm particularly glad because the GED now has become so much harder and I hear that the um, pass rate for the GED has has really fallen off so the students are doing themselves and everybody a big favor by continuing in um, and if it takes a little longer graduating but it's very important that they graduate so I think it's fantastic Trustee Petlichkoff I would just like to uh, since it's fresh on everybody's minds um, I heard from a school engineer at Maples whose um, snow blowers all broke down during the snowfall and he had to clear the sidewalks by hand around the Maple property and was totally exhausted and happy we had a second snow day. Uh, but I'd just like to give a thank you to all of the school engineers who worked so hard during um, this unique snowstorm that we had to try to 
maintain the sidewalks and the property so that our students could get back to school as quickly as possible. It's difficult too because I know my husband has to walk my son to school with a shovel because neighbors that yeah don't we have plow the same issue no <laughs> you know and you have these busy intersections um, and kids walking into the street to avoid the ice and that's so dangerous so I appreciate it's all the neighbors of our schools that plow their snow as well. Actually, if I can say something on that note, uh, just to thank all the parents, too, that are out there in front of the schools helping, you know, the kids, making sure the kids are safely yeah. walking on the sidewalks. And I know that that's been quite an issue at our school that we're at. And just kind of remind the parents that there are some rules in place for dropping off, and I think that's for the safety of the kids. I know I've seen that when I drop off my kids. I really appreciate the parents that are out there assisting because they don't have to be there. They're not getting paid to be there. And uh, I want, just want to say thank you for that. Well, one of the issues we had at uh, my elementary school was that uh, people were parking their cars in the school parking lot so that then they couldn't clear the parking lot because the neighbors decided to use that for their off-street parking while they cleared out their own um, properties and left them there for a couple of days too. So it, it's a real challenge for everybody to balance the needs of the community, um, but uh, I think we always have to um, understand that the students' safety comes first and foremost. Um, this a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, I got uh, an email from a student who is dual enrolled at uh, K-12 and um, the college, and there was a difficulty because they didn't realize that the college semester started before the high school semester ended and with uh, final exams and stuff like that, they kind of neglected their college class. And we have some rules and regulations at the college that require, because of financial aid and you know having to uh, pay money back to the federal government that we've instituted some programs there that require you know, a, uh, a student to be in class and participating the first two weeks or they get, and it just, the college was incredibly accommodating and the counselor at the K-12 was incredibly accommodating and the student was taken care of. And so I give great thanks, especially to uh, Dr. Capru at the college for jumping in and the counselor that helped at the K-12. But it got me to thinking that, you know, maybe, with our dual enrollment program that we need to put together a orientation and you know it doesn't have to be long but we need to make sure that students understand what their responsibilities are and I believe that that's already in process um, that Dr. Shankman and uh, Lisa Capru are already working on this and so I just want to give you my support and you know anything that you need from the board in order to make this happen I think that uh, we've come a long way in our working relationship with Henry Ford, and I want to see that continue to prosper. And I think that a lot of times these things come up not on purpose or not because somebody is, you know, trying to get around the system. I think they're just, they don't know or weren't aware of it. And because there's so many regulations with us not being, with student dual enrolled not being able to drop, they need to know what those consequences are and they need to have a good understanding of it before they um, start in the program. So, um, and then maybe at some point when it's all put into place, we could have a board report just to let us know what's going on with it. Yep, so. sounds good. It's my two cents. Any other commentary? Next item, oh, Trustee Lane. Uh, I was at the basketball game this past uh, Friday, Friday and uh, had a tour of the new murals at Edsel Ford. Uh, I know there are a couple of schools, quite a few of our schools actually have uh, murals or frescoed walls, uh, but they're really fantastic. And uh, it's really, uh, I mean, w all of us are very proud of the way our citizens have allowed us to maintain our buildings and the way they look so nice. But uh, it's public art in a uh, public space, and they're really fantastic. Uh, the, it's a lesson on the wall, and I remarked to somebody while we were walking by, it's a lesson that kids can just, students can breathe in. They don't have to think about it. They see the images of Mahatma Gandhi or 
ML King and, and other leaders, um, and it's really awesome. If people haven't been into some of the schools to see them, it's worth the trip. Uh, Edsel has some great ones. Really, I mean, like hundred feet long Down murals. The, hallways, yes. the entire entire length of the hallway. It's really beautiful. Um, Stout has some that they put up with their mascot in every single one, and and they incorporate uh, at some of the different schools their mascot or the incoming uh, middle schoolers. It's it's really. Uh, a real testimonial to our district that we have these and they last. I know my kids remember from the library at Snow all the characters on the wall there. It's really uh, a point of pride for our community. So I wanted to comment on that and then just recommend also there's a lot of events coming up. Like I say, it's almost spring. <laughs> um, so I, there's an engineering fair coming and people put a lot of time and effort into these events, I think as a board, we should attend as many of them as possible. Um, and then Mardi Gras is coming up as a fundraiser for the Dearborn Education Foundation. Uh, some of the sports tournaments will be coming up, so it's uh, nice. By March, uh, they'll be starting practicing for spring sports, and March is reading month. And um, I try to make an effort to go to at least one school and read, but it's uh, it, for any of the three new board members, it's a great chance to go in and you can really feel like a hero. Not only board members, but other personalities can do that as well. Uh, or just people. Or regular people. Parents. Personalities. They don't have to be personalities. Parents, right, right. <laughs> Celebrities. I was thinking of our city people or even and the mayor our state reads, our people. City yes, and a lot of them do. But you can really be a hero to uh, those kids because they really enjoy having a guest speaker. So I wanted to recommend that to people. I like when I go in, they don't know me as being on the board. I'm just Jack's mom. <laughs> That's the important role. Right. Anyone else? Well, if we're going, if we're going to make announcements like that, as uh, chair of the City Beautiful Commission, we are getting into our cleanup parade season as well. But uh, besides that, we are instituting a new program, uh, and the superintendent's well aware of it because he's been working hard with the school committee as well, um, where we're doing alternate programs um, besides the um, traditional cleanup parades to um, better connect with the students with the message about how to protect our environment. So we've been experimenting for the last few years with these alternate programs in the schools, and Henry Ford ha happens to be one, and they're doing another one again. Um, because they really enjoyed it as an alternative to a cleanup parade and marching through the streets. So we encourage um, all the neighbors because this is the time when the city and the schools have a message to um, send to the neighborhoods. And, and so we encourage all of our community members to come in um, to the school buildings whenever possible when we have a um, public event like that in order to hear the message from our students. Great. Anyone else? Next item. Request for information or future agenda items. We got the one, get one rolling. Next item. Uh, I was just thinking, oh. um, I, I <laughs> thought about this and, and uh, it, the information on the signing for safety was pretty interesting to me yeah. because that's been in the news. And I wondered whether it uh, might be possible. We had a student here what, a, one month ago who was signing the Pledge of Allegiance, mm -hmm. and uh, she did a fantastic job. I was so proud to see her. Uh, so Superintendent Wisson, I was wondering whether we might have a presentation on the signing program, signing for safety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. May I? Mm -hmm. um, I know that we had talked about it earlier at the budget meeting, and I know it's um, in our budget a little bit for transportation, but can we get uh, some a report or look at the bus routes? Because I know a couple, there were a number of inquiries from parents that were asking why, you know, asking why there wasn't a bus route by their place. I just want to understand what that process is. Sure. Or. Yep. Thank you. Next item. Superintendent's reports, personal commentary. Uh, you had mentioned the foundation's major fundraiser is coming up on Fat Tuesday, March uh, or February, excuse me, 17th. Um, so anybody interested in attending, please uh, contact <coughs> my office and 
We'll help you get tickets to the event. It really is one of the fun activities of the year and a good time to celebrate with family and friends. That's it. Next item. Future meeting dates, Monday, February 16th, 2015, HFC meeting, 7 o'clock p.m. at the Andrew Mazzaro Services and Conference Center in the Rosenau Boardroom, Henry Ford College. Monday, March 9th, 2015, P12 Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. Monday, March 9, 2015, P12 Board of Education special meeting, closed property immediately following board meeting at the administrative service center in the frank franchi boardroom monday march 16 2015 hfc meeting 7 p.m at the andrew mazara services and conference center in the rosenau boardroom henry ford college we are adjourned